Hello, my name is Stephen Lester and I'm a consultant cardiologist and director of the Cardiovascular Ultrasound Imaging Laboratory here at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. And I have a particular interest in the evaluation and management of individuals with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a genetically determined disease and in fact is the most common genetic cardiomyopathy with a prevalence in the general population of about 1 in 500 equally distributed amongst both men and women, and seen in all races and nationalities. This disorder is characterized by unexplained hypertrophy or thickening of the heart muscle wall. Many patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy are completely unaware of its presence and come to medical attention because they have seen their primary care physician for a general medical evaluation and the physician had noticed a murmur on clinical examination or an abnormal electrocardiogram. Others have evaluation as part of a pre-participation physical examination and similar findings are noted. Other patients, however, may develop symptoms attributed to this disorder, generally symptoms of shortness of breath or lightheadedness or chest pain with exertion, often exacerbated following meals. When they come to medical attention, the diagnosis is then made through general history, and physical examination, EKG evaluation, and then primarily through direct cardiovascular imaging, generally through cardiovascular ultrasound imaging or echocardiography, but at two, at times, MRI scan evaluation. It's important to realize that there is truly no one face to this disease. And of course, we're all unique individuals, but no more so than, it, than in those that have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. There are multiple different genetic abnormalities and how these genetic abnormalities may result in changes in the heart muscle wall architecture can be very different amongst individuals. The clinical presentation can be quite variable or some are highly symptomatic and others minimally symptomatic or asymptomatic. And then the natural history of this disorder. Now fortunately, most patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy will have a completely normal life expectancy. However, the devastating and feared complication to hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is sudden cardiac death. Therefore, all individuals that come to our clinic for evaluation, we spend a significant amount of time trying to stratify and evaluate the risk for this complication, and if deemed to be increased, we often recommend implantation of a cardioverter defibrillator. Now recall that this is a genetically determined disease and therefore any individual that has hypertrophic cardiomyopathy will have a 50% chance of passing this gene and possibly disease onto their children. There then too would be a high likelihood that this disease may be present in their siblings and other first degree relatives. Therefore it's very important to engage in a family screening program either through molecular or genetic testing, but if genetic testing is not performed or a gene defect is not identified, then through regular EKG and echocardiographic evaluations, generally yearly through adolescence to the age of 21 to 25, and then every three to five years thereafter, or following the development of symptoms. Now when patients come to our clinic, we have a multidisciplinary approach to their management. They may be seen by a geneticist for genetic counseling, a dietitian for nutritional counseling. We will talk about exercise and an exercise prescription, often being seen by one of our exercise physiologists. As we've mentioned, we will then stratify their risk for sudden cardiac death, and if deemed to be increased, will then be seen by one of our electrophysiologists for consideration of implantation of a cardioverter defibrillator. And then of course through medical management, aimed primarily at the relief of symptoms and to improve quality of life. This often involves taking medications. If patients continue to have symptoms, we will then readjust their medications. If symptoms persist, we'll readjust the medications again. But if patients continue to have symptoms significantly impairing their quality of life despite optimal medical management, and they too have some obstruction to blood flow coming out of the heart, we may then consider some non-pharmacologic or non-drug related treatment strategies. This may include 
alcohol septal ablation, which is in essence a controlled heart attack, or much more commonly, a surgical approach, whereby the surgeon shaves away a piece of the heart muscle, giving more room for blood to eject out of the heart. And following a successful surgical procedure, the majority of patients have a significant improvement in their symptoms and quality of life. If you have any further questions about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, please feel free to contact us here at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. Thank you.